Microcontrollers are extremely popular in circuits nowadays, and that is for good reason. They can be programmed to do just about anything and replace otherwise very complicated hardware. Take, for instance, the Arduino, and by extension, the Atmega series of microcontrollers. These devices allow us to manipulate hardware by writing software. The only problem is that writing code for and understanding these microcontrollers isn't exactly as straightforward as making a circuit out of transistors. So, in this video, I will provide the very basics to writing code for a microcontroller, specifically the App Mega series of microcontrollers, so that you can start making programmable circuits of your own and move beyond the confines of Arduino boards. Today's video will cover basic software controlled I.O. Every microcontroller has something similar to what I'll describe, so don't worry if you're trying to understand another microcontroller. The general ideas are still the same. This code should also generally work in the Arduino IDE as well. Take a look at your microcontroller's datasheet if you are still unsure. First, I will give you some example code and run it on an actual AVR and then explain how it works. This is the code that we will be using, and I will explain it in a second, but first I want to show you what it does. As we can see, it blinks each LED in an alternating pattern. To explain how the microcontroller can do this, I have created this PCB to demonstrate how the AVR handles I.O. on its digital pins, and you, the user, are the CPU. I know it looks complicated, but if we break it down, you will understand how it works completely. Let's start in the bottom half of the PCB. This is where I introduce the concept of registers. Basically, a register is a piece of hardware that stores binary data, and in this case, they are 8 bits. The CPU can read and write to this register. It's almost like RAM, except it's faster and it has a purpose in controlling the hardware directly. You, as a CPU, can read from it by looking at the LEDs. An LED that is on is a 1, and an LED that is off is a 0. You can write to it by selecting 1s and zeros on the dip switches, and then pressing the write button. We can see that in our code, the first two lines of the main function are the DDRB and the port B registers. The silk screen on the PCB represents these registers. Let's write these values into the registers. 0xff represents all 1s, so we can write that in. 0xaa is simply alternating 1s and zeros. While it's great that we can save this data, how do these registers directly affect the output? Well, we can take a look at the datasheet to find out. We can see that the port register is connected to the output through this component, which is a buffer. A buffer simply outputs the same logic level as its inputs, so, for example, a 1 on the input leads to a 1 on the output. We can already see that the output, which is the green LEDs at the top by the way, matches the port register. But what about the line connecting the, to the buffer from the side? Well that is the enable pin. The enable pin does exactly what it says, and when it is a 0, the output of the buffer is high impedance, regardless of the input. The buffer is implemented on the board as U2 and U3, and they are both the SN74HCT125 buffer ICs. Well, why would we want a high impedance output? Well, sometimes we want to use the pin as an input, and we don't want some output messing with the input. That is why the register is called the Data Direction Register, or DDR. A 1 makes the pin an output, and a 0 makes it an input. So, in the Arduino programming method, you can sort of think of the port register as digital write, and the DDR register as pin mode. The difference is that you are changing 8 pins at once. When we set the pin as an input, we can see that it is driven by the external connections I make. However, the port register still has one more trick up its sleeve. When the pin is set as an input, the port register can be driven high to set the pull-up resistor. This basically just connects the pin to VCC through a 10K resistor. This allows the external world to drive the pin, but it will be high by default if the external interference is high impedance. This just keeps the pin from floating. Remember, the pull-up resistor is only active when DDR is 0 and port is 1. This finally brings us to the pin register. This register is slightly different in that it is read-only, so you cannot write to it but it is the way that we read input and even output if you find the need to do that. Now let's continue on with the code. Once we enter the loop, the first instruction deals with the port register. This line of code basically reads like this. Port B equals port B exclusive ORD to 0xff. Firstly, remember that 0xff is 8 bits of 1s. 
If you are unaware of bitwise operators, the arrow is the exclusive OR operator. An exclusive OR is a logic gate, and its input goes like this. When the first input is a 1 and the other is a 0, the output is a 1. However, if both of the inputs are 1, the output is a 0, or if both the inputs are 0, the output is 0. So basically, the output will be 1 only if one of the inputs is 1. Otherwise, the output will be 0. This operator is especially useful for alternating bits, and you can select which one by setting the appropriate bit. Anyways, since we are the CPU, we need to look at each bit and XOR it with a 1. That just means that each 1 will become a 0, and each 0 will become a 1, alternating the output. And obviously, delay just means that we have to wait. We can now repeat this process forever because we are in an infinite loop. Now that you understand how to write code this way without the help of the Arduino libraries, why would you even want to do all this? Isn't it easier to refer to each pin individually instead of having to deal with the entire registers with 8 pins at once? Well, in some ways it is better, and in others it isn't. So yes, while it is true that it is easier to understand initially, and can lead to easier code in certain circumstances, it does have its drawbacks compared to the method that we use here today. First, the Arduino functions such as pin mode or digital write are a whole lot slower than writing to the DDR and port registers because the Arduino has to look up where each pin is located. For example, the pin 13 on the Arduino correlates to pin 5 on port B. Arduino has to find out where pin 13 is, whereas our code already knows where port B and DDR B are. Second, writing to the registers like this can lead to situations where we can take advantage of controlling 8 bits at once. We can read the register and write an 8-bit number to it, making it especially convenient in this example to alternate all 8 bits at once. This video serves as my introduction to microcontrollers that go beyond Arduino. This red board here simply provides an interface where you can directly interact with the ideas I talked about in this video so that you can learn more about it and experiment with it. If you want one for yourself, feel free to look in the description and get a kit where you can put one together yourself. Don't worry if you don't want to or can't afford to buy one, I have left the schematic in the description so you can put one together yourself. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please consider subscribing so that you can see my other videos. Have a good one!